Mark 12 and 29. And Yasha answered him, the first of all the commandments says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, one Lord. Same thoughts, same mind, one thing, one God, one spirit, one Lord, one Father, of his soul, one God. primo, follow him where he go, trying to wake my people up from all of their sleep mode, from all of their beast mode, she versus the heat. The arm of the Lord is for all of those that are not on one accord. It is one for all. We are one under the sun, cause it's one for the Lord. Yeah. No double Dutch, no double mind. We don't play the game. It's happening, Israel. Yeah, she hear your shoe up here, man. We are about to get into what is freedom of speech, as you can tell by the ticker at the bottom, right? What is freedom of speech? You are looking at a guy who has four fouls in the first half of the game. They have taken the ability away from me to be able to play defense. I'm a two-time offender when it comes to YouTube. And the problem is, is that I was told that I violated the guidelines. And the problem with that is that I really don't know what the guidelines are until I violate them. So they done flagged me, they done threw the whistle on me, they done told me that I done committed a foul. And not only that, I was warned that one more foul, that my privileges of being able to use the platform were going to be taken away from me. So now I'm like, what? I'm that guy standing in the middle of the court with my hands up pointing at myself like, are you sure that you threw it on the right person? You blew the whistle on me? What what did I do? Now the first time, the first file that I that I did, YouTube, I, I can honestly say that I I knew I was walking right up to a lie. I did. I, I knew I was walking right up to a lie. I felt like that I might have got whistled for it, but I wasn't sure. And when I did, it didn't catch me on surprise. But the second one, I was like, wow, wait a minute. I thought I was using all the precautions that was necessary only to find out that I wasn't careful enough. So I, it, it really had me scratching my head like, well, what am I supposed to do? What is it that I can say? What is it that I cannot say? Because you only know that you have crossed the line or violated the guidelines when you receive that email and certain functions on the platform have been taken away from you to let you know that you are in trouble. So I'm like, wow, wait a minute. Is this not America? <laughs> Is this not America? Do we not have the right of freedom of speech? Can I not voice my opinion? Can I not you know, share with others, you know, the things that maybe I have learned or are things that maybe I have seen. Do I just have to sit back and be like everyone else and just eat the junk food that is being put on the plate? Well, according to YouTube, and this is one of the things that I want to talk about. YouTube right? Do they have a right to do what they do to individuals like myself? I'm not the only one. I go through YouTube and I see it all the time. People talking about they have been flagged for this and they have shut them down for this and, and all kind of things. So, you know, I'm, I'm not on here whining, right? I don't, I don't need cheese and a violin, right? And wine. No, I'm not whining. I, I just want to put some things in perspective. I want to look at the bigger picture here, Job 9 and 24. Because the earth was given into the hand of the wicked, and they have hid the faces of the judges thereof. And if not them, then who? Right? So, so let's, you know, let's talk about this a little bit more. 
there is a certain drink that is out there. There is there is a certain drink that is out there that that I know for a fact that is, you know, a very bad drink, right? A very bad drink. And so all I did was try to tell people, you know what I'm saying, to stay away from that particular drink. Man, you know, whatever you do, do not take that drink. Don't drink that drink. And this drink is being served at certain bars, right? And so, you know, all I was doing was saying, you know, stay away from these bars. Don't go to these bars because... The bartenders at these particular bars, right, although they are making this drink seem like, you know, it's the best thing ever, you know, it's really not. So therefore, you know, the, the problem is, is that when I got to talking about the drink, I wasn't coding it right. So therefore, I went against the guidelines. Why would I tell my people to stay away from the drink? Because I love my people. I want my people to be drinking on something that I feel like is going to be bad for them, right? This is what we do. This is what we do as a community. As a community, we we help each other out. We we are there for each other. If I know that you are finna go somewhere that's going to put you in danger as your brother, because I do feel like I am my brother's keeper as my brother, I'm going to tell you, hey, you know, you might not need to go there. But now, you know. Obviously, the decision is going to be still left up to you, whether you go or not. But as your brother, it is my obligation to tell you, hey, you know, you might want to reconsider going there because there is not going to be a good place for you to go. So all I was doing was saying, look, you know, there is a drink that is being served up as, you know, the next best thing, the Grey Goose or the next best thing. You know, the Hennessy or, or whatever it is, you know, you know what we like. We like the Crown Royal. You know what I'm saying? But this drink here is going to have a different effect on you than, than any of that. When the bartenders look and, and, and talk as if they have been bartendering for years and they make it seem as though they are, they are creating, you know, the, the, the drink of life when our reality the drink is really the drink of death. So all I'm doing is just saying stay away from the bartenders. Stay away from the bartenders. Don't let the bartenders create this, this drink for you, this cocktail for you, because it could very well be the last drink that you ever have. Feeling my way around the guidelines, trying to figure out what the guidelines really are. What can what can you get away with and what can you not get away with? But yet at the same time, still voice your opinion. Opinion. Is that something that we even have anymore? Do we have an opinion? We still have opinions. And believe it or not, we still have a right to freedom of speech. But the problem is, is that we have to come and understand how it works. The First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States of America, which is supposed to be the land of the free right, it reads, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievance. That's what the First Amendment says. Now, Congress have made no law. It said that you cannot say what you want to say. Here in America, we really do have the right to voice our opinion, and that's a beautiful thing. 
I just woke up to the news of a guy in China, a billionaire in China, who is missing right now because he did a 25 minute speech and he downplayed the government. And I guess the government didn't like that. And so he's missing now. And that was the government way of saying, look, you can have all the money that you want, but you will never be more powerful than the state. We don't have that issue here because comedians make money all day, every day, talking about the president and everybody else, everybody, everybody, everybody is free game to be talked about except alphabet people. Zionist, right? Got to stay away from that. You know, we have an anti-defamation law, right? Anti-Semitic is what you would be called, right? But everybody else can be talked about. Every na nationality or group of people can talk about black people. They can they can talk about black people all they want, right? Every religion is free game, right? Every Everything is free game except for a few things. So Congress have not made a law to say, look, you can't talk about this, you can't talk about that, because if you do, you would get in trouble. But YouTube can make a law and say, you can't talk about that. And if you do, you will no longer be able to use our services. Facebook can say, hey, you can't talk about that. And if you continue to talk about that, you're going to no longer be able to use our services. Instagram can say, hey, you cannot talk about that. And if you do, you're no longer going to be able to use our services. If you are an entertainer, right, regardless of how you feel about a situation, if you want to continue to work, for the network that you work on or continue to make movies or continue to make music or continue to do game shows or whatever it is that you do, you're going to have to speak according to the language of the corporate corporate owners. You're going to have to be able to speak that language. Because it's not Congress who is running the show. Washington is not running the show. Corporations are running the show. These corporations are owned by billionaires who is spearheading everything that's being fed to us. And in order for them to be able to control every narrative, these billionaires that own these corporations they create their own laws and they are well within their rights. I don't own YouTube. I use YouTube. Which means that I am under the digression of the person that own YouTube or the corporation that own YouTube. And it helps the government out though, right? Although the government say, look, I'm not going to make a law to say that you can't talk about that, but I protect the billionaires that own the corporations that they'll be able that they will be able to make these laws. And if you don't abide by what they say, then they'll silence you. Everything that come out of the media is the exact same thing. No one has a difference of opinion. No one. There is a whole television show that is called The View. But when you watch it, it's only one view. They make it seem as if they go back and forth. But, but they really don't. They really don't. Whoopi is the moderator. <clears throat> and they have one young lady on there, Megan McCain. She is, you know, like the black sheep of the rest of the family. She does. She, she, she's a little bit more opinionated than the other ones. But when it all boils down to it, when it's time to, 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 to put the nuts and the bolts in it, they all agree on the same thing. Think about if 
there was an openness of opinion in the media. A lot of the things that we now accept, we probably wouldn't accept as well as we do because there would be opposition to it. There's no way anyone can get on on TV and say <laughs> and say that they oppose to homosexuality. You'll be called a bigot. But in America, according to the First Amendment, I should have an opinion as to whether or not I accept that or not. I'm not saying that I hate gay people. I'm saying that I hate gay ways. I prefer to be around heterosexuals. You can't say that in the media. If you want a job in the media and you really feel like that, you got to keep that to yourself. I never forget Tim Hardaway. Never forget Tim Hardaway. Tim Hardaway was a guy who was on his way to becoming an NBA analyst. He had just um, retired from basketball. And, and my personal opinion is that when they asked Tim the question, Tim, they already knew how Tim felt. So therefore, I really don't even understand why they asked Tim Hardaway the question. But when they asked him the question, Tim gave an honest opinion. Is that not what we're supposed to do? The answer is no. That's not what you're supposed to do if you want to continue to climb up the corporate ladder. This was Tim Hardaway in 2007. Tim Hardaway, last question before we let you go. How do you deal with a gay teammate? Oh, uh, first of all, I wouldn't want him on my team. And um, second of all, you know, if he was on my team, I, I would, you know, really distance myself from him because um, uh, uh, I don't think that's right. And, you know, I, I, I don't think that, you know, he should be in a locker room while we're in a locker room. And it's just a whole lot of other things. So I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even be a part of that, but you know, it's stuff like that going on, and there's a lot of uh, other people out here like that that's still in the closet and don't want to come out the closet. But you know, um, I, I just leave that alone. You know that what you're saying there, though, Timmy, is flatly homophobic, right? It's just flat. It's it's bigotry. Well, you know, I you know I hate gay people, so um, um, you know I, I let it be known. I don't like gay people. I don't like to be around gay people. I don't, you know, I, I, yeah, I'm, homo, I'm homophobic. I don't, I don't, I don't like it. It, it shouldn't be in the world for that or in the, in the United States for it. So, yeah, I, I don't like it. So the only thing that Tim Hardaway was guilty of was having an honest opinion. He don't think that they should be in the locker room. With the guys, what's wrong with that? And you gay, I don't want you in here. You might be looking at me, right? And they have made it to where gay people is a whole nother race of people. How can you say that's bigotry? No, that's a lifestyle that they choose to live. And you're going to force me to like that lifestyle? That's not cool. That's not cool at all. How are you going to force me to like something? Through these corporate owned platforms that the millionaire, billionaires have bought. YouTube was a platform that began for people who did not trust the media to begin with. It was a way for people to express themselves. But it has turned into something else because the billionaires start realizing that it's, well, it's way too many people out here that's that's too opinionated. So what they do, they go and buy it. And when they buy it, they build these guidelines. And if you cross over these guidelines, then you're going to be restricted from being able to talk. 
This is the thing, though. They are within their rights because they own it. It's no different than owning a store. Stores here in Texas can refuse service to anyone that they want to at any time because they own it. It doesn't make it right. But they own it. Remember Job 9, 24, the earth was given into the hand of the wicked. There is no way in 1973 you'd have had a commercial on TV with two gay people. Now, that's a norm. And nobody better not say anything against it because if you do, you're going to be labeled a bigot. There is no way in 1973 you'd have seen commercials with all of these interracial relationships. These beautiful black women and these funny looking white guys. It is becoming a norm and it's an agenda. And if you say anything about it, then you're going to be called a bigot. There's no way in the world in 1973 a transgender dude dressed in drag would go to an elementary school and read books to children. But these things are accepted because the media we play this stuff to us over and 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 over again. And then they buy up the platforms in which people who have an opinion they don't like the juice so that they can silence them. It's one thing sitting up in your living room amongst your friends talking about what you don't like and what you're not going to drink and what you're not going to do. It's a whole nother thing when you get on a platform with millions of people and listen to you or watch you and see you move and, and reason and, and understand and say, hey, maybe that, that, that guy got a point. Tim Hardaway never worked again in media after that interview. The interview was over with too. This is the thing that bothers me. I never forget that interview. When it was done, it was over with. And before the guy let Timmy go, he said, one more question, Timmy. What are your views on gay? And it had nothing to do with the interview. Why bring it up? Because he needed Timmy to collaborate with the agenda. And Timmy didn't do it. And although Timmy at that time probably did not have four files and almost about to file out. That was an illegal hit to the head. Which the result got him ejected from the game. Period. Got him ejected from the game, period. So here we are now. Here we are. What are we going to do about it? Are we going to fold? Or are we going to learn the rules? I say let's learn the rules. Let's learn the rules. Us as in a community, anyway, we have always had our own language. We've always known how to talk to each other in plain view of everybody. No one understanding what we're talking about but us. What's changing now? I'm telling my people to stay away from the, from the drink. If by all possible, don't go to the bar. 
because people go to these particular bars and they never come back home. Stay away from those bars. Don't drink that drink. Whatever you do, read, stay prayerful, because we are in the fourth quarter of the game. The iron and the clay is about to get smashed by a stone that has been pulled out of a rock, out of a mountain. And a whole new kingdom is about to be set up that will never end and is going to be given to the saints of the people. But you have got to be able to use your eyes and see and you're going to have to be able to watch and you're going to have to be able to use your ears and hear because you're going to have to know what the spirit says. And you're going to have to be able to keep the laws of the most high or higher and also have the faith of Yeshua Hamashiach, whom the world called Jesus. These are the only way we're going to make it through this. We are now in what Jeremiah called Jacob's time of trouble. YouTube have a right to silence whoever they want to silence. For whatever reason, they choose. And one thing I know about the wicked of Edom is that they make rules as they go to ensure that they don't lose. So I'm not going to get upset anymore. I'm going to walk the tightrope. Now, I'm going to try my best to stay in the game, right? But if I don't, I don't. But at the same time, every time I get a chance to tell my people to don't drink the drink and stay away from the bars, that's exactly what I am going to do. That's what I'm going to do. This has been a little something. I'm going to be coming back. Going to be dropping as much information as I possibly can to the people. Let them know what's going on. I heard in the news that um, that bars in New York are going to be getting fined a hundred thousand dollars for. But not selling enough cocktails. Um, so, you know, things like this, you know, is, is why we need to think within ourselves. Why is it that you want to sell so much of this cocktail? Why is it that it is so important that that this particular cocktail is is, is being sold? Let the people decide if they want to take the drink or not, right? But the billionaire is in control. There's nothing we can do about it. We just got to deal with it. We're going to keep moving. We're going to sit back and we're going to watch Babylon fall. We're going to watch it fall. Because that's exactly what it is going to do. Babylon is going to fall. And when it fall, when it fall, when Babylon fall, we want to be right there to be able to see it fall. This is she and Yeshua. This is on the Perfax channel. We're going to keep it rolling the best way that we can. And I'm going to try my best to have a weekly broadcast to give to the people. Shalom, shalom.